Hey everybody, happy winter to you all. Yesterday was the solstice, uh, December 21st. And a lot of folks think that December 21st is also the first day of winter, and often that's true, but actually the first day of winter varies between the 20th and the 23rd. Rarely falls on the 23rd, and it actually won't fall on the 23rd until I think the year 2303, if I'm not mistaken. But anyhow, that's kind of beside the point. Each year around the solstice I make a video just talking about the solstice and um, what it means to me the renewal you know this is the last night was the shortest night of the year or the longest night of the year and now we're going back into longer days over a period of time and um, we're getting ready to head out to the families uh, my wife's family to do an early Christmas celebration today and um, I decided before I left I'd make a quick video to talk about kind of this uh, seasonal, <laughs> the balance that we need to have to make, um, to make this, the pff, seasonal connections and ups and downs we have. You know, I, a lot of you out there probably have your own families to deal with and in-laws to deal with, but a lot of you also may be lonely on the holidays. So I'm obviously not speaking to everyone when I talk about dealing with family and the chaos, but I enjoy it. It's actually part of the fun. As much as it, the holidays to me aren't a painful thing, it's not a matter of getting together with people that's the problem. It's the obligations and the stress that we put ourselves through to make sure that everybody's happy, getting enough gifts and whatnot. And, um, you know, I have a lot of love in my heart for those, you know, in my family and in my friends group. But uh, I don't always show it through material items. I guess it's one of those things where it's hard to know what to buy a person and I don't like to just waste money frivolously. But, um, of course, that's not what this video was going to be about. Really, this video was about the balance, and that's all part of it. It's about part of enjoying yourself, but at the same time realizing that... Um... Let me just back up for a minute here, kind of define where I'm coming from. We can't always focus on the negative, right? And a lot of folks, it seems to be all they point out. They'll talk about what's wrong with other people, what's wrong in politics, what's wrong with, you know, the economy. Everything is about what's wrong with the world. And um, when you hang around one of those gloom and doom type people, it becomes a very, you very, very quickly tire of spending time with a negative person. On the opposite end of that spectrum are people who um, are overly positive and I know this because I've tried it before, okay? Years back I tried the looking at everything with a positive light. And what I understood and now understand is seeing the silver lining in things does not mean that everything is great. Um, and I always knew that, but it's a matter of really sorting through the bullshit that happens in life and saying, am I going to focus on the crap that affects me negatively? or try to attract more positive into my life. And this is where the law of attraction, it's not necessarily some universal law or like the secret or something that you can read in a book. It's the realization that you can manifest your own surroundings by putting yourself in a more positive frame. You're more likely to like attracts like in that way. Um, it, it's, it's, it's hard to dispute that. Negative people tend to spend time around other negative people. It's just the way it is. So, uh, what I, what got me thinking about this was <clears throat> there's a, a whole lot of bullshit going on in the world that we can fight against, that we can be angry about, that we can be frustrated, depressed. But there's also a lot to be happy about. What we choose to focus on is really up to us. And I think it is about that balance of both sides. But there are people, for example, on YouTube who every single video they're talking about the the doom of humanity, how we're all screwed, how we've either destroyed the planet, destroyed ourselves, or there's some, you know, demonic entity coming to consume us all, or the reptilian race, or the Freemasons are going to eat us all alive, or kill our babies, whatever it might be, you know, a lot of it's pretty preposterous and doesn't do anything to solve any problems or really get to the root of our own angst. But um, on the opposite end of this is this really, really, how do I put it? It's like this reaching for the stars, these kind of pipe dreams people have. And I, I see this a lot because I watch science channels, uh, and I really love seeing the, the future predictions of futurists and, and where we might be. And uh, this morning, I was thinking about this thing called the Dyson Sphere. Dyson Sphere is supposedly this uh, 
well, it, came, it, it, it was originally a writer, his name was Dyson, and he came up with this paper in the 19, 1960, I think, where he talked about um, any advanced civilization that had reached a few thousand years beyond uh, in industry would eventually build a giant, let's just say, a structure around their star to capture that energy, and that they would be living in this, you know, or on this device that is built around this star. And my, my first thought is, this sun is huge. How are you going to build a wall around a sun with this tiny little resources we have on Earth? But I look beyond that and think, okay, it's just a pipe dream. People are looking through telescopes, looking for any radio waves or, a, um, let's just say, a, you know, UV waves that might be related to, uh, sorry, not UV, but uh, I think it's, I think it would be infrared, right? Infrared waves coming from this galaxy where there's these people living around a star. Um, Sorry to get off track here, but that was a major component to the thinking of when I started this video. I was like, you know, really? I mean, I look at... I like to look into the future and think, wow, we could do some amazing things. But the idea that we would build a structure around a star... Now, this is coming from scientists. Scientists who know that stars are unstable. They know who that one impact of, a, of something uh, like a meteor on the outside of a casing around a star could implode the whole thing that there's really no way to actually do this but the fact is people are writing papers and talking about it and not just one but several people have made youtube videos in the science community about these dyson spheres could we live on another planet um could we the one this morning was on kirgizat I, I can never pronounce that right in a nutshell and i'm sure a lot of you have seen those videos and i've always enjoyed them but lately it's just like they've gotten better at making the videos but the stories are just absurd. Like, today it was about making a some sort of a rocket around the sun that would help us to, if we thought we were going to collide with a galaxy in a million years, that we would be able to launch ourselves off into space in a different direction. My, my thought was just like, do you really think humans... Humans can't even look five years in the future to see what we're doing to our own environment. You think we're going to give a shit about a million years into the future and really put in energy and time to build something around an entire star that would take probably a trillion times more energy than we have on Earth already when we already suffer from energy? And I'm just... I know if you're not into science stuff, you're probably like, whatever, that means nothing to me. I don't know what you're talking about. But anybody who's in slightly interested in the sci-fi realm has run into this. These preposterous theories that we're all going to pack up and move to other solar systems. Maybe. It might happen in the future, but um, the reason I bring that up is because it's kind of a desperate attempt to really see an, a positive side that is so far beyond what we are now. But it's still necessary. It's just like the people who see a hugely negative future where, you know, we're going to be invaded by aliens and, and taken on as like uh, these shells that the aliens are going to operate, whatever your thought might be. The blob. You know, humans, let's just put it this way, we have a really poor track record at predicting where we're going to be in even 10 years. And it's pretty humorous to me, because this has actually been a good thing, because the sci-fi image of the future we have in the 90s, this dystopian kind of um, Terminator-type future with AI, um, I I'm more likely to see, human, uh, see the future as a little more moderate now than I ever did in the past. In other words, I don't see this dominating of the earth by in other words our own ignorance may kill us but the, the dystopian extent to which we take things it shows our imaginations are quite ripe um i do have hope from humanity i have hope that our species can continue on um and even with the underground facilities we have we could probably survive a vader a major cataclysm celestial cataclysm but Really, it's not about whether humans survive as individuals. It's about whether we can manage ourselves as a species. Because eventually we'll grow back to the same type of... You could call us a virus, or you could just call us a, a bloom, you know, a blooming species as it is. You know, the Earth has had many blooming species. I mean, the dinosaurs died out. That's all you need to say. <laughs> I mean, they, they had their moment on Earth, and these things roamed for hundreds of millions of years, and then, boom, in a flash, mammals took over. And whatever might take over next, we we really don't know. So what's my point to all this? We can look at the big picture, we can look at the future and the, and the dreams of a million years down the road. 
We can also look back in the past and say, no, this is where who God was, and no, this guy was a prophet, or this guy, or go back even further and look at cave paintings and say, well, they must have meant this. No, they must have meant this. We can look at hominid skulls from, you know, a million years ago and say, hmm, I wonder if they wielded spear points. But does any of that help us lead a better life in this conscious awareness that we have right now? I don't know. That, reminds, that remains to be seen. But uh, what is the most crucial thing that we have right now that we can do right now for ourselves to actually improve our own lives? Spend more time in reflection. Love your friends and family. Connect with people. You know, in our short time here. As humans, our natural tendency is to see patterns among the chaos. We are pattern-seeking creatures, which means we are grasping, and it's not our... It's not our uh, fault. It's not a fault. It's actually a benefit that we're looking for these patterns. It helps us piece together an understanding of our surroundings. And, hey, we have every right to do that. We should be doing that. Don't worry about what other people are telling you you should or shouldn't think or believe or look for. You just go down your own path and you try to find patterns. And when these patterns come together, you can start to see connections. Hopefully, it's not carried into these extremes of apophenia where you're like, you know seeing patterns that don't exist, or seeing faces in the clouds and thinking they're real. I mean, humans have a tendency to grasp onto this, the ethereal, um, and really try to make it real. And if that works, so be it. But um, there's two factors to life uh, that I find the main, the main important factors of not just life, not human life, but existence itself. And that's emergence and entropy. And those two things, hand in hand, are, in my opinion, the true yin and yang. When I see the yin and yang, I don't see light and darkness or good and evil. I see emergence and entropy. And entropy is the natural tendency for everything in nature to degrade down to its smallest components. But there's emergence. Somehow, some of those components come together to form atoms. And these atoms come together to form molecules. And these molecules pull together to form complex organisms such as ourselves with all of our organs, different cell types. It is absolutely amazing to be alive. And sometimes it's important to step back, look at that for what it is and say, look, I may not understand why my heart keeps beating without me thinking about it. I may not know why I was put here or what I'm supposed to be doing, but there's one gift I was given, the awareness as well as the awareness of heart, if you will, to see when things feel right and don't. And I'm fortunate for that. It's not always accurate. Our emotions can get in the ways, but we can have an emotional intelligence that allows us to lead a better life, live a better life with one another, and connect with other people. So, have a wonderful day. I guess I better get ready to go. I'll talk to you all soon. And uh, if I don't talk to you all before the holiday, I hope you have a great holiday, whatever it may be. And, uh, Thank you to all my subscribers, thank you to all my commenters, and thank you to my Patreon patrons, I really appreciate it. I'm trying to set something up for my Patreon as kind of a give back to my patrons, so that'll be coming on the new year. I'll talk to you soon. Be well.